Hey everybody, that computer guy here. Today I'm going to be setting up VPN connections with the FortiGate. Uh, this is for like home users to be able to remote into the office and work remotely. I figured this would be a great video to make uh, right now in light of everything going on. Uh, so I hope everyone out there is, uh, you know, keeping calm and staying safe during this time. Uh, but in the meantime, I know a lot of us IT admins are, are stuck in a scramble trying to get our remote workforce up and going. Um, so here we are on our FortiGate. Uh, I am on my 60E. Uh, I am on version 6.2.3. Uh, I did update since last time. Uh, nothing with the VPNs is going to be any different though. So this will look the same even if you're back a few versions. Uh, so to set up the VPN, you know, this is all built into the FortiGate. Uh, if you're familiar with Cisco and maybe you came over to managing a FortiGate now and you're being told to set up VPN, it's a little different. Uh, there isn't uh, licensing like there is with the Cisco uh, or some of the other firewall platforms. So when the VPN uh, interface is up and established, uh, an unlimited amount of users from home uh, can connect into the VPN on the FortiGate without having to mess with any kind of licensing or anything for just basic user connectivity. Uh, there is a limit depending on the hardware model that you're running, uh, but those limits are pretty high. So if you have an appropriately sized model for your work, it's very likely that you will have enough connections for your users to simultaneously use uh, the VPN interface. So the first place you'll go here is the SSL VPN settings page, uh, which I'm on. So when you first come here, this is gonna be empty, the listen on interface, and then some of these settings won't show up yet. But basically the first thing you'll do is click on listen on interface. Now this is the WAN interface that you want to listen on. So wherever your uh, WAN connection is, whatever interface it's on, that's the one you're gonna wanna listen on. If you have SD-WAN, it would be SD-WAN. So once you turn that on, it's immediately gonna have this pop up here. You can customize the port that the SSL VPN interface is listening on. Uh, but it'll have this linked automatically right here. Now let's say that I just came in here for the first time ever and I assign the WAN interface, I put my port on here that I would prefer, and I click this. So as of right now, I'm not gonna get anything because there is no rule allowing any kind of connectivity into the environment, right? So even though that doesn't work when you first click this on, don't worry about that yet. So now we'll come and look down through the other items here. Uh, you have an idle logout timer for if somebody is inactive, you know, for five, 10 minutes or whatever you want to set it to, uh, the VPN connection will drop. It is using the factory uh, certificate, which assuming you're watching this video, you're probably in a hurry. This is okay for a moment, right? To get everybody up and running. Uh, you can require a client certificate on the other side if you'd like to match. Uh, and here is the address range that these users are going to get assigned to, right? So when you connect to a VPN, what IP address are they going to get? This is how it's set by default. It gives them this range. The range is really, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what range they're getting. But if you'd like to specify, uh, you are able to click specify address and you can assign an address object if you've set one up. But we'll just assume that we're going to automatically assign. Now, DNS server is interesting. Uh, this is something to pay attention to. Now, by default, it's going to be set to same as client. Generally, you're going to want to specify, uh, only being because usually if someone is logging into the VPN to connect to assets that exist within the office environment, it's very likely that they need the DNS records to be able to connect to them, I mean, like user shares or some, some such. Uh, you know, a lot of people connect by name and they don't know the IPs. So it is kind of important, or it is very important rather, uh, to specify the DNS server here and actually have your DNS server set. So if you have an internal asset DNS server that has records for internal assets, you will want to forcefully specify the DNS assignment when people connect to the VPN. Now I have my home DNS server here and then as a backup I have Google. Uh, so that's good. Now, the last thing that you need to pay attention to here is by default, this user groups is not gonna have anything assigned to it and it's gonna say full access portal. Now, the portal portals are just ways that you can segment um, you know, who has access to what when they connect to the VPN. You can also do that additionally with firewall rules. But if you were gonna do it with the portal, 
you would come in here and basically you double click this uh, and let's say we're going to do the full access portal which is very likely what you're going to be using in a pinch and then you can assign the users or groups that can get to the full access portal and i'll explain the full access portal a little bit more here in a moment so users and groups admins is a group on the firewall that i created previously its members are my account only and you can see here that my account is also being referenced and that is referenced from LDAP, which is coming from Active Directory. So my FortiGate is querying Active Directory. Active Directory is presenting the users to my FortiGate and I'm going into my FortiGate user settings and I'm assigning by LDAP this user and this user is placed in the admins group and the admins group is referenced to the full access portal. Okay. So real quick, before we go over to the portal, uh, we would just click apply here and then it would be active at that point. It's uh, straightforward to set up this part. There is additional configuration needed though. So now we have a portal, we have a WAN interface and it's listening. So we've gotten that far. Now, just to show you real quick with the users. So let's say you need to have this up right now and you don't want to mess with, you know, tying into LDAP and everything. That's okay. Uh, you can come in here and you can create a local user and go through it and make credentials. And then you could take that user, which you can see mine here is being queried by LDAP. And you could come into a user group and you could throw them into this admins group. That I had created. So you would just click this and then here you see there's a local user guest. So let's say you have 20 users, you just click them all on. They'd be part of the admins group and then you can assign the admins group to the full access portal. It's just an easier way than you having to uh, go through and assign them individually. Just put them all in the group. So we've completed this page, we've applied it, and now let's look at these portals. Okay, so again there's three portals. Um, these are set up by default. There's the web access portal, the tunnel access, and the full access. Again, you're likely going to be focusing on the full access here. So now what, is these, what are these settings, right? So full access portal is the assets that the person has uh, access to when they connect to this connection. Um, you can limit users to one connection at a time. So if you don't want someone to be able to log in to multiple computers at the same time with the same account, you can click that radio on. Uh, it is going to be in tunnel mode by, by default. Uh, split tunneling will be disabled by default. Now, what does split tunneling do? Okay. If you have split tunneling on and someone is at home, right? if they go to go to Google, if split tunneling is enabled, that connection is going to route out their home internet and go to Google. If split tunneling is not enabled, that's going to tunnel back to your office and then go out of your office's WAN to connect to Google. So if you want your users to go out the WAN connection at your office, then split tunneling should be off. Now, my, why might you want to do that? Uh, if you want web filtering to be applied or some sort of um, security profile to be applied even while they're at home using the VPN connection, then you would disable splint tunneling and you would force every single connection that they make while connected to your VPN to go out of your WAN so that you can filter it uh, as needed. Again, I have split tunneling enabled here. Uh, and all that's doing is saying that, okay, if they're trying to go to DT LAN net or server LAN net, it is going to route through the VPN. If they're trying to go to anything else, it will route through their own connection. That's all that means. Source IP pools, obviously, you're probably only going to have one just like this. You have one IP pool that users are coming out of. Uh, there's some options that you can set here. You can allow the client to save the password, connect automatically. You can keep the connection alive. You can also do DNS split tunneling which that's a little more advanced, you probably wouldn't need to use it, but take the notion that I made before where I was setting the DNS settings and then take the notion of split tunneling that I just explained and apply those two things together. You can do a host check. So you can forcefully 
um, make the Forta client do a antivirus check prior to the VPN establishing a connection. You probably won't be using that in a pinch either. Uh, you can restrict to specific OS versions. Um, so you can only allow VPN connections coming from these flags for OS version. That's possible. Again, in a pinch, probably not going to use it. Enable web mode is by default turned on. And what this does is allows them to go to that public IP address and get a SSL VPN portal login page instead of having to use the thick client, which is over here. This is the thick client. So we're going to leave that on. There's some items here that you can enable. You can do predefined bookmarks for pages or assets that they might need to get to. Again, you're probably not going to mess with these things in a pinch. Uh, you can enable the Forta client download, and I will show you what that does in a moment uh, when we get to the web bone screen. So now you've defined what this full access portal is going to allow, what it can connect to. You've set up the VPN settings page so the interface is listening. So you now have a WAN interface listening for VPN connections, and you've defined a portal. You've defined what that portal can talk to, and you've set a group of users to that portal. The next thing you need to do is allow them access. So in the objects here, there is a policy that I pre-configured. Now, by default, there won't be any policies yet. This policy is saying that if someone is coming from the SSL VPN tunnel, has a source address, of one of the VPN addresses, then they are allowed to talk to eHome DT LAN. So this is only the DT LAN subnet out of whatever VLANs I have assigned. This is the only one they'll be able to talk to. Now, this does require you to assign a group. So this means that if they're coming from any address in the SSL VPN interface and they are in the admins group, right, they will be able to talk to the DTLAN interface on all addresses in the DTLAN net. Schedule is always in all services. We are going to accept those packets. Don't need to worry about flow versus proxy here. And that should not be enabled, even though it probably will be by default. Uh, you can set up uh, the security profiles to be active, but I have uh, those defined in other videos. So if you're interested in what some of these do, uh, go check out some of my other videos. For now, we're just going to go through this. So again, this is allowing SSL VPN connections to talk to DTLAN. It's allowing anyone coming from the admins group to talk to anything on the DTLAN over all ports. We are going to enable this policy, and we're going to click OK. At this point, this rule is active. So now we have a listening SSL VPN interface. We have a portal defined, and we have a rule to allow the traffic through this connection. So now we can jump over to the VPN. We can go to the settings. And now you see when I click this, because there's a rule in place, it is going to take me to this web portal where I can log in. Now, again, this is only if you're doing this without the thick client. I would recommend that you use the thick client, but this is nice in a pinch, and I will show you why in a moment. So you give them the public IP, and you give them the port. And again, that's shown right here, so very straightforward. You just give the user this if they're at home. They're going to get to this page, and it will say download for a client here instead of launch, launch for a client if they don't have it yet. Now what that's going to do is redirect to the Fortinet page, and it will automatically start downloading the thick client, which is here. Now let's say you didn't want to do that. Let's say you did want to just allow them to connect here. They would be able to just put in their login credentials. And there you go, they have a connection. They are now on the SSL VPN. They can now connect to the assets within your environment as you've defined. So this is an active VPN connection at this point. And you do not need the thick client to make this work. It does off, uh, offer the download for the client here for various devices. And if you were to download it, this would be the thick client. And they open it. It would be right here. They would see this. They would click this. They would add a new connection. And they would fill out the connection details. Now, I already have this established, so I'm going to edit it. All they need to do is fill in the name, which is indifferent. 
things that matter that they have to have right are the remote gateway, which is the public IP, which again is defined up here. And then they're likely going to customize the port and put the port number in, which is up here. Now, once they do that, they will be able uh, to put in the credentials the same way that they did here. They'll click connect and they'll be connected to the VPN and they'll be able to connect to any assets that you've defined. Now, one nice thing about the FortiGate is to see if, it, if people have it working. Um, the monitor is nice. Uh, so I can come here, I can see uh, an active connection and the last time it was active. If you had several, they would all be listed here. Um, there's also some nice um, monitoring here where you can basically see uh, the events in this log here. Let's see if they'll pull. Yep. Um, so you would see users connecting uh, to the interface here. Uh, so basically you would see any connections coming in. If it had a failed uh, login attempt, you would see that show up here. Uh, so it does give some granular things for troubleshooting, especially if the user is at home. Uh, and you can, if you needed to, you can forcefully disconnect people. So if they were sitting there, you know, you log in and you see that someone has had the connection open for X period of time, you can forcefully end the sessions right here out of the FortiGate. So that's all for today, guys. Um, again, you know, this it's, it is pretty straightforward. Once you do it once or twice, it, it's pretty easy. Um, the policies are the main things that catch people a lot. You know, people turn on the VPN and those settings that we went through at first and they wonder why it's not working. The policies do have to be there prior to it functioning. Uh, if I wanted someone to be able to connect to, you know, the server LAN, for example, I would have to come in here um, and add the server LAN. And then I would have to add another destination uh, with the server LAN as well. So if you have several VLANs, obviously, you know, you probably go through and create a role for each one. I'm very granular. Some people do multiple interface uh, policies. I do not. So uh, if I had 12 VLANs, I would create 12 rules uh, and granularly control them that way. So that's it for today, guys. Again, you know, stay safe out there. I know a lot of us admins are in a lot of stress right now. Hopefully this video is straightforward and uh, maybe it'll help somebody get their connection set up. Uh, you know, I try to put out one of these a week. Uh, I did falter last week. I was ill, um, but I'm back now, so I should be able to do these every week again. Uh, if you guys need any help or anything, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are in a crunch. Uh, do feel free to contact myself personally uh, or my company, Data Partner, uh, for some help if you need it. You know, we are here to help. Everybody's out to help each other right now, hopefully. Um, and again, take care, guys. Uh, like, subscribe if you like the content. And uh, until we talk again.